So this is a huge topic of subtrochantric fractures and intertrochantric fractures, which is uh, very close to the heart of every orthopedic surgeon. So what do you treat? So this is a 93 years old gentleman, osteoporosis, intertrochantric fracture femur with subtrochantric extension. So should we consider replace because he's just 93? If you see the, his picture, frailty score is much high. You can treat this percutaneously with long nail, with static locking because it's subtroch. You can immediately mobilize this patient and you can have a good end results by cephalomedullary nail. So this is his immediate post-op. Spiral blade does impact the bone around itself and does not core out the bone. It is very useful in elderly age group and you can see completely united fracture even at 93. High subtrochantric fractures are proximal fractures located 5 centimeters to the uh, lesser trochanter leading to the difficult situation in front of orthopedic surgeon in form of how to reduce it properly. Everybody knows about the classification and deforming forces are iliosos and short external rotators proximally and distally adductors. So these we have to nullify. I do this in lateral position always, all the time. Let it be subtrochantric or intertrochantric. This allows easy access to the uh, entry point and reduction is easier. Fracture table, you may find very difficult entry point because these IT and subtro fractures, they are very uh, particular about the entry point. Lateral takes out the fat out, out of your way. Reduction is assistant dependent, but it is very easy. So what are the advantages of supine fr on fracture table that assistant is less, but when there is a polytrauma, putting him on the supine on fracture table is easier. Disadvantage, entry point and pudendal nerve injury. And lateral, there are so many advantages. Easier entry point, faster preparation, conversion to open reduction is very easy. Lateral wall management is easy. Reduction is very easy. So uh, that is the advantage of lateral position. What are the reduction strategies and techniques you can use? Clamps, ball spikes, pushers, a femoral distractor, finger reduction tools, blocking wires and screws, and circlage. All these things you have to use when you are using a subtrochantric fractures fixation. So entry point is very important. It should be medial to the tip of trochanter always when you are doing it for subtrochantric fractures. It should not be anterior, it should not be posterior. If you go for posterior, there is loss of proximal fixation. If you go more anterior, there are hoop stresses, can burst the proximal femur. So you should be in the center and medial to the tip of trochanter. This is the example where you don't follow the pyriform fossa entry point. You will find that your fracture goes into the uh, varus angulation and this is typically because of the wrong entry point. So minimally invasive nail insertion technique, the entry point is very, very important. Medial to the tip of trochanter and in the center of the, in the lateral. So this is a starting point, then your reduction falls into, into the place. So proper reduction, proper entry point is mandatory and lateral starting point will result into varus that is always important so tip should be medial to the tip of trochanter lateral to the tip of gt is okay for shaft femur fractures but not for the it and subtrochantric fractures this is the case of high subtrochantric fracture russell taylor type 2b you can see how comminuted it is so this is the lateral position you can see the reduction i i, I use the spike to reduce the uh, medial neck you can see the once you reduce the neck, I can go for an entry point which is medial to the tip of trochanter, then the proximal reamer, and then this is cement augmented TFNA with spiral blade. And these are the only uh, incisions for this comminuted IT fracture, uh, subtrochanteric fractures. Uh, I'll skip this video. This is two months follow up of this patient, and this is the union of this subtrochanteric fracture, minimally invasively fixed. Another patient, 17 years old, fall from height, very uh, bad subtrochanteric fracture you can see the entry point. So why do you see that the two entry points? Because with the, this, if you see this, this is initially I tried, okay, but I was not going to the medial side of the tip of trochanter, so I had to go more proximally. So you can see the two things, but then you can see the assisted reduction for anterior spike, and then uh, you can put a long TFNA, and then you can go ahead. 66 years old lad lady, take IT fracture taken for the uh, subtrochantric fracture taken for the nailing elsewhere in the periphery and you can see a long spiral subtrochantric fracture and then the patient was refused uh, for surgery because there was no implants available but they have op started operating 
and they have made this long spiral to the comminuted subtrochantric and then shifted to SIR. So now you can see the lateral IT, subtroch and in between. So this is heavily diabetic lady opened, abandoned and transferred. Then instead of doing a close reduction, open reduction, proper alignment and fixation with long nail with circlage wire, lateral wall is also taken, subtrochantric fracture is also taken by circlage and you can see the healing of this patient very well. Another case, long spiral subtrochantric with intertrochantric fracture. In this, if you cannot do uh, close reduction, open reduction should be planned. He also had subdural hematoma. You can see uh, lateral wall is taken care by circlage wire and subtrochantric is fixed with circlage wire and long nail, tan nail is used, immediate post-op. You can see the staple, so it was open reduction. One month post-op, patient was came for follow-up, he had sudden drop in saturation, he had a pulmonary embolism in OPD because of DVT. This patient was not given any DVT prophylaxis because of subdural, a CT angio was done, pulmonary embolism, IVC filter and clexin, patient recovered, united, went well nicely. There is nothing like one-time solution surgery for the IT fracture femur. Oh, this is one-time coxofemoral bypass, nothing like it. You can always have this type of uh, one-time solution problems. So, even in 91 years old, intertrochantric fracture, hypertensive patients, you can do this minimally invasive surgery and percutaneous fixation and immediately mobilize the patient with the help of walker, partial weight bearing or full weight bearing as per pain tolerance. And this is the post-op x-ray, completely healed patient, 91 years old lady and she is doing fine. Another patient, intertrochantric fracture, varus at the uh, fracture, hypertensive heart disease, dementia, fixed with percutaneous fixation with long t uh, PFNA2, two months post-op, and this is healed completely and patient started walking normally. Another patient, a very basal neck fracture. If you see the lateral of the hip x-ray, you will find that, oh, I should replace this. But this patient is 75 years old lady. She has CA mandible, up, appeared, metast uh, appeared metastatic, MRI done, no mates, surgery done, biopsy done, negative, and this was it. It was not replaced, this was fixed properly, and she was mobilized immediately post-op, and then she started walking normally. Another patient with reverse IT fracture, 75 years old lady, hypertensive, diabetic, hypothyroid, CA colon, chemo, pre-op, DVT present, MRI, hips, no mates, pet, no mates. So should we replace or should we fix? So this was fixed with lateral position, TFNA, cement augmentation, lateral wall taken care of, cement augmentation was done and this is well uniting and patient started healing completely well, came back to what original she was walking. So fixation and preserving own hip is very important. Another 67 years old lady with IT fracture, if you see AP is nothing, but if you see lateral it is vastly dis uh, displaced. Close reduction was possible with the help of shine spins and uh, Steinman pin and a long nail and patient healed completely well and she started walking completely. Another patient with TKR on same side with basal neck fracture with LT fracture. So should we replace or fix? So decided to fix with the shorter nail which I don't like and then uh, fixation was done. Similarly, another elderly person was fixed with the fixation, went out to have very well. So just in the end, orthoplasty with proximal femoral nails were studied at meta-analysis with Harris hip score, mortality and etc. They come up with uh, PFN, fixation is better in than replacement. Mortality is less with fixation than hip replacement. There is no significant difference in other complications. You can easily stop blood loss and do this percutaneous fixation. Operating time is also less with fixation. Weight bearing is easy. Full weight bearing at the end of 10 months as versus fix replacement at one month. So OS has come up with the evidence for fracture fixation of this fracture. Cephalomedullary for stable intertrochantric, cephalomedullary for subtrochantric or reverse. So always they said that subtrochantric or intertrochantric intramedullary is better in cephalomedullary nail and unstable. So in end, you have to follow the reduction tools. In conclusion, reduction is important. Entry point is medial to the tip of GT. Im implant IM nails are better. Long or short, I use long. Longs are better. Locking is must. Position as per your comfort. Young or old, ITNF needs fixation and failures need femoral bypass. Thank you.